Well, welcome to the tiny house on the road to nowhere. Um, this is Saturday, August the 12th, I think. I don't think I've done a comprehensive update lately, so I'm going to kind of give you where I'm going. This is the tiny house, uh, as it is right now, um, and in its current configuration. I've got some boxes sitting around because I've got some things that I don't know whether they're going to work. Am I going to send them back? Do they actually work? Am I going to, am I going to keep them? So I kept the original boxing and packaging until I make a decision, yes, they are a keeper. Uh, the, uh, uh, the end pieces are up on the wall cabinets and on the base cabinets. Uh, the bed, of course, is in. Now I have some fans. Uh, air conditioning with my current setup is just not feasible. I have some additional uh, solar panels coming in. Uh, I'll put up another solar bank uh, similar to, uh, let me walk outside and I'll show you the one I have. Uh, that in the distance there is a set of four 100 watt panels. I have another four 100 watt panels that I'll put in another uh, bank like that, uh, and that is generating very good, um, very good electricity. However, uh, I think it's going to take a little bit more. Going back inside, um, here we go. On that, um, so the big fan is a is an alternating current AC fan and the two smaller ones are DC direct current fans uh, they are actually made for going on your dash in a car uh, but I put them on the ed end of the bed it is very comfortable here in the evenings even if it's hot or, and muggy uh, you know as soon as I you know break a sweat and then turn the fans on uh, as long as I have a breeze blowing over me uh, I can sleep comfortably and by the morning the fans have to be off or I'll be freezing to death so uh, with the ventilation that I have, a lot of windows and that type of ventilation, I can, uh, this thing keeps all adjusting, but anyway, uh, those uh, I can um, uh, be very, fairly comfortable. Now, the thing is the difference between AC, alternating current, and direct current. Now, I have an inverter as part of my solar panel, and that's all the inverter equipment down there and batteries and batteries tanks. Uh, and those, uh, you know, store the uh, excess electricity, uh, but they don't store enough electricity, and they won't even with the new panels to run everything AC during the night. Uh, just too much current draw. I could get some more batteries and have more current. Uh, that may be an answer, but then I also wanted to explore just using DC equipment. Now, this refrigerator I have is just your small apartment style, uh, you know, dorm room type refrigerator. Yeah, come on. Anyway, uh, that's, um, it runs off AC and I've been able to keep things cold. I can't run it all the time. Come on. But um, that is the AC uh, re uh, refrigerator. And then uh, I have, I bought this 700 watt microwave. Uh, it will run off of the inverter. It's AC. This cook pot is DC, and you can see I have a DC uh, run directly from the batteries up here with these DC connections, basically just cigarette lighter connections that go to this, and there's also this cooler that is made for camping and that kind of thing that hooks up to a car, and it is it gets very cold very quickly. It's actually not a bad little uh, refrigeration unit. And it runs off of the direct uh, the direct current. Now, what I can do with all of this stuff that runs off direct current, my charge controllers uh, from my uh, solar panels will allow uh, a connection to load, which means 12 volt loads, uh, and I can hook all of this anything that's hooked up with the cigarette lighter, the fans, the cook pot, the this uh, cooler or refrigerator, which also heats food. Uh, I can hook directly up to the load side of my charge controller. The AC stuff has to go through the inverter, but that inverter is pretty efficient, so it really is not a big loss in current. Uh, the biggest problem I have is at night uh, when I lose uh, my solar panels, having enough electricity to do what I want to do through the night. Now, of course, I have my generators. I have a small generator and a large generator, but they make a noise and they require, you know, that's, that's for emergencies and for loads that just cannot be supplied uh, with a uh, with a uh, solar panels unless you had you know a lot of them so 
uh, for specific items uh, that run just for specific periods of time, a washing machine, uh, a natural gas dryer, those kinds of things. I would just crank up the generator and let them go. So, because basically they run for an hour and then they're done. And so I don't mind running a generator. I have the fuels to run a generator for an hour to do that kind of thing. So it's going to be a combination of direct current directly from the panels, uh, AC through the inverter off of the battery tanks, and AC through uh, generation through my generators that are going to generate the tiny house here on, on the road of nowhere. What it does do is make you really think about what you're using in terms of electricity. And um, uh, the, the, the amount of electricity that the average household uses is incredible, the amount of power, given the amount of power that comes just directly from the sun and from what I can grow and turn into fuel. Uh, it really demonstrates how much uh, energy we are using uh, that is, has been stored uh, previously for us and how way out of line it is as far as sustainability goes. Um, I am using all of this equipment. This, this is just an experiment. This is to educate me on, you know, watts and volts and, and amps and, and how, how those, uh, uh, how you can best uh, engineer uh, the difference between uh, a combination of AC and DC and uh, how you're going to get those different types of electricity in and what you're going to use them for and when. So um, that's the, the project on the road to nowhere right now. The, the garden is over. The garden was uh, mowed uh, this week. And uh, let me walk out. The garden was mowed. So it's done. Uh, the millet has mowed. And boy, the dove and all the other birds, there were th a hundreds, if not a thousand birds out here on these fields this morning. And they come in in the morning and the afternoon. And there must have been a dozen or more dove uh, that came in and went down the field. There'll be dozens before uh, too long as they as more find out about the millet, brown top millet that's laying out there. And there are tons. The seeds are tons of seed uh, that those things produce. And I bush hog those with uh, with my brother's old tractor on uh, one day this week. So um, I, I'm going to have a little more time to get back to my engineering on some of the stuff down in the pole barns and, and all that kind of stuff. But... Uh, and I got to get the uh, garden turned for, for any of the fall crops that I'm going to put in. But uh, that's the latest on the road to nowhere. I know this is a kind of long one, but hadn't put one up in a while, so I wanted to cover cover as much as I could. So I uh, have been in the tiny house now for over a week, maybe 10 days, and it is terrific. What you would think would be confining is more caressing. It is, it is a space that is comfortable. It's a space that's sustainable. It's a space that is, it's not too big, and it is not too small. It is a bed. It is a toilet. It is a shower. It's a sink. It's a table to sit at. It's, it's, it's what you need. It's what I need uh, for right now anyway. So anyway, having a great time here at the Road of Nowhere. We'll talk to you all later. Bye now.